Hello, I'd like to read an excerpt uh, from my book, Beastmark, available on Amazon in English and soon to be available in French. I'm reading from chapter seven, The Abomination of Desolation. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. And here is the mind which hath wisdom, the seven heart, horn, seven heads or seven mountains on which the woman sitteth, and there are seven kings. Five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. Revelation 17, 7 through 12. The scarlet covered woman sits on the seven mountains. This information is for the mind which has wisdom. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and of the seven, and goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. Revelation 17, 11 and 12. One hour means a single space of time. When the Lord Jesus was being tempted, Satan paraded before him the kingdom of this world in a moment of time. That was not what Jesus came for. Jesus came for an everlasting kingdom that shall not be destroyed. The book of Revelations tells how the kingdoms of this world became the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. These kingdoms reign with the beast for one hour, one limited space of time. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength to the beast, the temple. And as he went out of the temple, one of the disciples saith unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. And Jesus answering said unto him, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. That's Mark 13, verses 1 and 2. One of the disciples said, Do you see what kind of stones and what buildings are here? Jesus answered, Do you see these great buildings? The disciple was trying to bring Jesus' attention to the buildings, but Jesus asked him if he saw these buildings. Jesus didn't think that they had actually actu accurately seen the buildings. They were marveling at the buildings, and Jesus asked them if they were seeing them. The disciples were looking at one thing, a part of the picture, but Jesus could see the whole picture the whole circumference of time and space in his eyesight. There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, tell us, when shall these things be? And when shall be the sign when all these things should be fulfilled. And Jesus answering them began to say, take heed lest any man deceive you. 
Mark 13, 3 through 5. There would be much deception related to what Jesus spoke. They say Israel is the fig tree. Israel became a nation in 1948. It says this generation shall not pass away until all these things are fulfilled. All these things were fulfilled long ago. Jesus and his disciples were in the middle of the fig tree. The most celebrated time in Israel was when David, the celebrated king, ruled over all and was preparing for building the temple. The greatest time that Israel ever had was when Jesus lived. This was the day of their visitation. Solomon's temple was nothing to be compared with what was being erected there at that time. Here is one who is greater than the temple. His eyes are open and his mouth is speaking the great truths of the universe. This was the fig tree. It was in full bloom, but it bore no fruit. Now in the morning, as he returned into the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only. And said unto it, let no fruit grow on thee henceforward forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If you have faith and doubt not, you shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if you shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. Matthew 21 18 through 21. Jesus cursed the fig tree because it bore no fruit. Here another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it round about and digged a wine press in it and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruits of it. And the husbandmen took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first and they did unto them likewise. But last of all, he sent unto them his son saying, they will reverence my son. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and let us seize on his inheritance. And they caught him and cast him out of the vineyard and slew him. When the Lord therefore of the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? They say unto him, he will miserably destroy those wicked men and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus said unto them, Did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The stone is become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. It's Matthew 21, 33 through 43. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but to whom, on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to power, powder. And when the chief priests and Pharisees had heard his parables, they, preserved, they perceived that he spake of them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. The nation that bore no fruit was the scribes and the Pharisees. They appeared to be holy, but they had no fruit. They were like briars 